I was not supposed to be here. Uh, Philadelphia, I mean. I was not supposed to be here. My opinion of Philadelphia was formed very early in life um, by two things which I find to be uh, indelible sources. One, the uh, opening credits to the movie Philadelphia, and two, uh, the theme song to uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. <laughs> it seemed to me in my youth in the 90s that Philadelphia was a place where you could be just chilling out max and relaxing all cool and all shooting some b-ball outside of the school and a couple of guys who are up to no good can start making trouble in your neighborhood and I don't want anything to do with that. And then I saw the brilliant movie Philadelphia where the Avenue of the Arts looks positively post-apocalyptic. It, like, it looks awful in that movie and it broke my heart. It looks like the book of Eli and I uh, and Bruce Springsteen is on there just, I don't even know what the words are, but it just makes me depressed. Like, I just I want to take a bath with a toaster. So I had no interest in coming to Philadelphia. Like, I had no interest in being in this city. I said, I will never find myself in Philadelphia. Spoiler alert, I did. Cut to 2005, I had left college. My parents had sacrificed a lot for me to go to a really nice school where I could study to be a performer and to be a writer. And I returned to Baltimore to work at the Hard Rock Cafe and sing the YMCA every day, um, which I, you know, was a really great use of, of all my training. I was, I was artistically and, and intel intellectually uh, uh, I wouldn't even say discouraged is a strong enough word. I was basically bankrupt. I don't know where I went wrong. I didn't know what I was doing wrong. I couldn't find an artistic community to plug into. I couldn't find anything with, inside of myself. I didn't know if there was anything left inside of myself. I didn't know really if I was actually any good at anything I wanted to do. So I sold hamburgers and I did that pretty well. Um, I decided, however, that my depression was the result of seasonal affective disorder. So I bought a plane ticket to Honolulu because that's the land of the midnight sun. Um, I'm not really clear on the details of the non-contiguous states, so I mean, that might be wrong, but whatever. Um, I said, I'm gonna move to Honolulu. That is my plan, and everyone applauded lightly because I was a little crazy at that point and they just didn't want me to do anything drastic. A friend of mine, a really good friend of mine, Lisa, said to me, I'm moving too, do you want to maybe make a, a shorter leap and go to Philadelphia? And I said, oh, why would I do that? She said, well, you know, we went there once and we went to that, uh, the concert at World Cafe Live and we enjoyed it. And I was like, oh, that was a good concert. And so I moved to Philadelphia. <laughs> This isn't one of those talks about how to live your best life. Just so you know, if you're taking notes, you may want to, uh, whatever. <laughs> so I moved to Philadelphia, and there was one saving grace. And I've got to backtrack for a second, and I know this is redundant, and you probably you already know this. I, like every other adolescent boy, had one specific dream when I was young. I wanted to be a backup dancer for Patti LaBelle. <laughs> and you know, I, I know, you're like, oh, duh, who doesn't want to be a backup dancer? Show of hands, right? I know, but you know, I just, uh, context, okay. So I wanted to be a backup dancer for Patti LaBelle. I remember I'd seen her and Oprah Winfrey on the Oprah show and they're having this sort of hair battle and I don't know what was going on, but I was struck by the power that she harnessed and the, the, the extraordinary talent that she had and the way that something that she did connected with something inside of me and all I wanted to do in life, all I wanted to do was stand behind her while she sang New Attitude and just go do, 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 do. That's all I wanted to do. You didn't know there was gonna be singing today, but there is. <laughs> so I wanted, to be, I wanted to be a backup dancer for Patti LaBelle, and I heard through the grapevine that this is where they kept her. So I decided <laughs> when I moved that I would start stalking Patti LaBelle. And I would just ask people, do you know Miss Patti? And they'd be like, no, and they'd be like, whatever. Do you know Miss Patti? I don't know. Through a series of circumstances that are entirely magical and that I am still to this day amazed at and that I don't have time to go into, I got a job working at a Stephen Starr restaurant in West Philadelphia, University City, excuse me, called Pod. And Pod is one of Miss Patti LaBelle's favorite restaurants, according to the grapevine. And so I started working there and I waited by the door every day, just Miss Patti, Miss Patti, Miss Patti, never. There's one phone in my house that has rung only once. It's the Patty phone. It's got a wig, it's got no shoes on, it rolls across the floor when it rings. 
and it rang one day, and Daniela Mabale, who is the pastry chef at Pod, and she's the best pastry chef I've ever tasted, and I've eaten a lot of feelings, I mean cupcakes, and so let me tell you, she's the best. She called me, and she said, Patty's here, and so I ran. I'm running down the street, I'm flapping my arms, I'm crying, and I get there, and I walk up to her, and it's there, she's there, table 10, and I'm just like, ah, 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 ah. and she's like, speak up, baby, and I was like, ha, 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 ha. And she took my hand and her beautiful hand and she hugged me and the whole restaurant turned purple and she lifted me up and we flew and she sang Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Some of this may not actually be true, I don't remember. <laughs> Something woke up in me when I met Miss Patti LaBelle. It was a simple celebrity meeting. I took a picture, I put it on MySpace at the time. This is retro. But something woke up inside of me and I wanted, I had been close to that thing that I found so extraordinary for much of my life and I wanted to be part of it. I wanted to be, bring it close to me and I wanted to wake that part of me up inside that had felt something when I saw her. And I can't sing as you know and I didn't know what to do. And so I, start, I started searching Philadelphia for, art, for outlets, for anything for me to do. There I could feel like I wasn't dying inside every day without any direction without any purpose. I flipped through the city paper, and I found this ad for this organization called First Person Arts that does, uh, that does story slams twice a month. And a story slam, it's like a poetry slam. You, you get on stage, you tell a story, a true story for five minutes around a theme, and then you get rated or judged, and, and, and somebody wins. And so I went, and I told a true story about being discouraged, and about being at a point in my life where I was just like, what did I do wrong? What do I do to get out of here? I told a story that was true, and I won, and I was shocked. I was shocked that I could speak, and I was shocked that they would let me. This, this is before I knew that the truth is extraordinary and that every person has it in them. This is before I knew that, that, that telling the truth opens up a door, not only in myself, but a passageway from me to every other person. When I, and I've been telling stories for four years now at Story Slams and at of venues uh, up and down the East Coast, and every single time I tell a story, every single time somebody laughs, or somebody nods their head, or somebody comes up to me outside the super fresh and says, I really enjoyed what you did, I get a little shock, and I feel a little closer, and I feel a little, a, a little bit more of a part of a larger community. This is the city where I found myself. This is the city where I found that I have a story to tell and that my story is important because of the truth, that you have a story, and you have a story, and you have a story, I'm channeling Oprah, and I know, but it's true, but we all have a story to tell. And I'm grateful for, to this city. I am so grateful to this city. There is a music in this city, and I'm grateful to the music of this city for allowing me to add words to it. So sometimes I'm walking down the Avenue of the Arts, where it's, which is beautiful now, and the lights on the buildings turn purple. And I walk by Gamble and Huff, and I hear Miss Patty in my head, or maybe it's out of the sidewalk, or maybe she's walking behind me. <laughs> she goes, doot, 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 doot. I got a new attitude. Thank you. <laughs>